So in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to make a powerful color blend using text, just like the example you see on my screen. So this is a vertical example, but it also works horizontally depending on the overall look that you want to achieve. And I had previously made a video going over the basics of blending shapes inside Illustrator. So if you want to check that out as a bit more of a basic intro before watching this, I will link that in the description of the video for you to go ahead and check out. But with that being said, let's get going. So the very first thing I'm going to have us do is to actually make a color swatch palette. And you're going to do that by just quickly and easily blending two different colors that I have as individual swatches on the screen. In this case, I'm using a hot pink to a cyan blue, but totally up to you what colors you want to do. And when you blend these, it almost makes individual color cards that you can use to easily pick out what color you want to use for your text. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. So the first thing you're going to want to do is to go over to your toolbar and then select the rectangle tool, or you can hit M on your keyboard, which will automatically select that rectangle tool. And then in the fill section of the toolbar, just double click on the fill to bring up the color picker and then select the color that you want to use for your very first square. So in this case, I'm going to select a hot pink, but you can select any color that you want. And once you have your fill ready to go, just click on the stroke swatch on the toolbar to bring that to the front. And then to the lower right, there'll be a white box with a red diagonal line going through it. If you have a color currently active in your stroke, just click that to remove the color, which will ultimately remove that stroke. And once you do that, you can go ahead and draw the square. So with the rectangle tool selected, just click, hold, and drag with your mouse on the screen while holding shift to draw a perfect square. It doesn't actually have to be a perfect square, but that's how I have the example. So we might as well copy that. And then what you want to do is go back to the toolbar and select the selection tool, which looks like a black arrow. Alternatively, you can hit V on your keyboard to select that. And with the selection tool active, what you want to do next is hold alt on your keyboard. If you're on a PC or option on your keyboard, if you're on a Mac, click, hold and drag the square off to the right while holding shift, which just keeps it on this perfect horizontal plane, move it to the right a bit and then let go. So now we have a second square that's duplicated and we can go back to the fill by clicking on it and then double clicking on it to bring up the color picker. And then we can select the second color that we want to use. In this case, I'm going to do a pretty bright cyan blue, but up to you what color you want to use for your color blend. So with that being done, I'm going to hit okay. And we now have the beginning and end point for our swatches. So with that selection tool still active, I'm going to click, hold, and drag over both of these squares. And with both of these squares selected, I can now go to create a blend. So what you wanna do here is go to object, and from object, you wanna to go to blend, and from blend, you want to go to blend options, which will bring up some options for creating the blend. And under spacing, you wanna click that and just make sure that specified steps is selected. And specified steps basically means the number that's in this box will be how many of these shapes will be duplicated between the two shapes. So with 10, there'll be 10 additional squares drawn between the two that we have as our starting points. So I think 10 is a pretty good number for me. If you want to use more or less, totally up to you. Or I could even do this super simplified and just do however many letters I want to use exactly. But I'll do this a bit more complicated to show you what that looks like too. So I'm going to hit OK, which you can see doesn't do anything here because we have to make the blend now. So I'm going to go back up to object and then from object, I'm going to go to blend and from blend, I'm going to go to make, which is going to blend these colors together and make a bunch of individual swatches that we can then use to color our individual letters. And to make this a bit more easy to actually use each individual swatch, what you want to do is have that be selected with your selection tool go back up to object and then from object you want to go to expand. You can just make sure object and fill are both selected. They should be by default and then hit okay, which will convert this blend into individual objects. And then you can just right click or control click if you don't have a right click button and then ungroup this, which will make it possible to select each individual color. So in this case, I'm going to pull three swatches to use for my colors because I'm going to do a three letter word to make this a bit more simple and fast for the purpose of this video, but pull however many swatches you need for however many letters your word is going to have. So this is now what we're going to use to create our colors for our text. And I'm just going to move off to the side here so we can get going. 
So this is the font that I'm using. It's called Montserrat Black. It's a totally free font, and I will link it in the description to download in case you want to use this exact same font. But this will work exactly the same for any font that you want to use. So feel free to use whatever you want to use. So just type out that font using the type tool. And once you get that in a pretty good space and ready to go, we can begin with the next step. I'm going to change this word though by double clicking on it to type cat as a three letter word will take me much less time than the entire word of colorful in this particular video. So you want to go back to your toolbar and select that selection tool or hit V on your keyboard to select it with the keyboard shortcut. And then I'm going to hold alt on my PC or if you're on a Mac, hold option. And I'm going to click, hold and drag this type down just to duplicate it really fast. I like to save a working version of the type so I don't accidentally overwrite it in case I want to change it later on. And then I'm going to select that text with the selection tool and then right click or control click if you don't have a right click button. And from that point, I'm going to create outlines because doing that is going to make the coloring portion of this much more swift. So I'm going to hit that to create outlines. And then I'm also going to right click or control click and ungroup this from this menu so I can very easily select each individual letter. So I'm going to do that now. So now with the selection tool, I can select each individual letter. And now comes the fun part of coloring these. So I'm just going to click on the C with a selection tool. And then I'm going to hit I on my keyboard for the eyedropper. And I'm going to click on the first swatch that I made to color the C, that hot pink color. And then I'm going to hit V on my keyboard to select the selection tool. Click on the A, hit I on my keyboard to bring up the eyedropper tool and click on my second swatch and then do the same thing for the letter T. So I'm hitting V on my keyboard to select the T, hitting I for the eyedropper and then clicking on the cyan blue to make that final letters color. And now what I'm going to do is highlight over all of these letters with the selection tool active, hold alt on my keyboard or if you're on a Mac, hold option, click hold and drag this down while holding shift to keep these on a perfect vertical plane and then just let go to duplicate that. So now we have our start point and our end point. And what we want to do now is to do the final coloration process with the fills and strokes to make this look like my example looks down below. So I'm going to click on the letter C, which will highlight that. And then I'm going to hold shift and hit X to swap the location of the fill and the stroke in the toolbar. So now we have a hot pink stroke with no fill and I want to make that fill white. So I'm going to double click it and in the color picker, I'm just going to move it to the upper left hand corner to make it a perfect white and then hit OK. And I'm going to do the same for the A as well as the T. So on the A, I'm clicking that with a selection tool, hitting shift X to swap those two different colors, double clicking on the fill to select the perfect white, hitting OK and then doing the exact same thing for letter T. So select it, shift X, click on the fill. And then there's also a swatch in the lower left hand corner that should be white from your previous two different letters. So you can also just click on that little swatch there if that's available in order to change that to be white. So now we have the top letters, which are all colored as they should be. And I just want to make sure that the lower letters are the exact same thickness as the upper letters, because now these have a one point stroke where the ones below do not have that one point stroke. So I'm just going to give them that one point stroke to make this be a bit more perfect, but you probably don't even have to do this step. I doubt it'd be super noticeable if you didn't, but I think it's probably just the best way to go about it. So in this case, I'm selecting the C at the bottom with the selection tool. I'm going to double click on the fill in order to bring up the color picker. And now I'm going to highlight over this hex code and hit control C on a PC or command C on a Mac to copy it and hit OK. And then I'm going to go back to the toolbar to the stroke, double click that. And then with the hex code selected, these numbers here selected, I'm going to hit Control V or Command V on a Mac to paste it. And then just hit OK, which will now add a one point stroke to the letter C. That's the exact same color of the hot pink fill. So now I'm just going to quickly repeat that process for these other two letters by selecting them, double clicking the fill, highlighting over the numbers in the hex code section of the color picker, hitting control C or command C, double clicking on the stroke, pasting that number in with control V or command V hitting okay. And then I'm going to quickly do the exact same thing on the final letter of the process here. 
So now we have our start point as well as our end point for these color blends. And what I'd like to do now is actually just quickly group both of these. So each individual word is grouped together once again. So with the selection tool, I'm going to highlight over the top cat and then hit control G on a PC or command G on a Mac to group that. So these are all grouped together. And then the same thing on the bottom one, I'm going to draw over all of them to highlight them and then control G on a PC or command G on a Mac. So now comes the fun part of actually making this blend. So what you want to do here is highlight over both of your words that you have just colored and then go to object from object. You can go to blend and from blend, you can actually just click make because it should absolutely remember the same exact thing you did before. So I'm just going to hit make, which will draw 10 different cat words between these two different words here. And if you want to go ahead and also adjust how this looks to make it look a bit different, you can do that very quickly using the properties window. So to do that, you can go to window and then properties about two thirds of the way down. If you don't see a checkbox next to the word properties, just click it and it will show up on your screen. If you do see a checkbox next to it, it's there somewhere on your screen. So you just have to find it. So while you have this blend selected using the selection tool, you can go to your properties window and then under quick actions in the properties window, there is a blend options. So you can click that, which will just bring up the blend options very quickly. And this is where you can go back to the specified steps we had before and make this a larger number or a smaller number, depending on how you want this to look. So let's do 15 for this. And I'm just going to hit preview so I can see that in real time and check out how this particular blend looks. So I'm going to think that's totally fine here and I'm going to hit OK. And also I noticed on this text example, it's reversed compared to how I want this to look. So the letters on the bottom are actually in the front and the letters at the very top here, which I want to be in the front are in the back. So if this happens to you, just highlight over that blend to select it. And then you can go over to object from object. You want to go to blend and from blend, you want to just click reverse front to back, which will reverse the order of those. So I'm going to click that. And now we can see the top cat is in front and the cat at the bottom is in the back where it should be. So if your example ran into the exact same problem that mine did, that's how you solve that. And now we are to the very final stage, which is drawing the shape that this blend is going to mimic. So you can either draw a vertical shape, kind of like this line on my screen to create an example like this one or a horizontal shape to create an example like this one. It's totally personal preference as to what you want to do. And in order to do that, you can go over to your toolbar and select the paintbrush tool. Alternatively, you can hit B on your keyboard to select that by default, and then just draw a very simple shape, either vertically or horizontally using the paintbrush tool. So I'm going to draw a shape like this to pretty quickly and easily make a basic line of how this is going to look. And essentially it's going to respect the overall shape and also the length. So the length does matter. So do be mindful of that as you do this. And if you don't like the shape that you drew, just have that be selected and hit either the delete key or the backspace key, and then hit B on your keyboard to bring the brush back up and then redraw this until you get it looking a way that you want it to look. Alternatively, you can hit control Z or command Z to quickly undo what you just did. But once you do get a line going the rough shape that you want this text to look, you should be in a pretty good spot. So the very final step is to have the selection tool be active, click, hold and drag over both the type blend that you made, as well as the line that you drew, and then go to object and from object, go to blend. And now the final step is clicking replace spine. So just click replace spine and you can see that we now made this blend of text. And we're essentially done here, but with that properties window, if you don't like how this looks with how many shapes you have blended here, you can always just click that with the selection tool, go back to blend options and change the number of steps here to be a smaller or larger number to make this look a bit closer to how you want it to look. And also if you use the white arrow in the toolbar, which is the direct selection tool in the very center of your shapes, you will see a very faint line. Almost certainly that is the path that this thing is traveling on. So you can just click on the various points and adjust the anchors to adjust the overall shapes of your blends, or even click on the individual points and drag these around to pretty dramatically change how your blend looks. So you can adjust this once you're done. 
And even if you click the endpoints, for example, like an anchor point at the very bottom and hit delete or backspace, you can delete these individual points to make this a smaller or longer blend, depending on if you want to stretch it out or just delete them to make it a bit more simple. But that's really it for this video. I do hope you found it to be helpful. And if you did find this video to be helpful, feel free to hit the thumbs up button to like the video and let me know that it was helpful to you. And of course, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave those in the comment section of the video. Maybe I can help you with a question or maybe someone else can help you with a question too. And if you wanna see more videos like this in the future, please consider subscribing. I do my best to keep creating new content just like this. But that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching.